Number ten. One teacher in Malappuram, India, will not let anything keep him away from teaching his students, not even a river. Each day, Abdul Malik wades through neck-high water to get to the primary school where he's worked for more than 20 years. The school where he works as a mathematics teacher is surrounded on three sides by the Kandalundi River, and to cover a distance of just 12 kilometers by bus, the journey would take him three hours. Malik used to be late when he had to change two buses and walk a distance of two kilometers to reach the school. The ordeal continued for about a year until one of his colleagues, who learned about his back-breaking journey, suggested that he swim across the river. Swimming across the river seemed to be a fantastic solution, as it takes him just a few minutes from his house to get to the riverbank and another few to walk to the school after crossing the river. Every day at around 9 a.m., he reaches the riverbank and wraps his personal belongings in a plastic cover. Then with a tire tube around his waist, he takes to the water. On reaching the other side, he puts on his dry clothes and makes his way to the school, where a bunch of smiling kids is ready to greet him. Number 9. In Egypt, people passing a cluster of giant rocks heard a high-pitched and peculiar whining coming from between the stones. Curiosity peaking, they searched the cracks and crevices of the rocks for the culprit. Finally, they located where exactly the crying and whining had been coming from. They gathered around the space between boulders and looked inside. Hardly able to see, it took them a long while to identify what was making all that noise. Much to their horror, they eventually spotted the source of the crying, a puppy. Locals explained that the puppy had been trapped for over a month and no one had been able to free her. To preserve her life, they'd been feeding her between the cracks. The hopeful rescuers at first tried sliding into the spaces between the rocks. Much like the other locals, however, they could not get far enough inside to have a shot at rescuing the trapped puppy. Those involved tried to enter the boulder stack through every crack and crevice they could find, but to little avail. Determined to save the puppy, they did not give up, sliding into and thwarted by uncomfortably tight spaces. Days went by without success, but these rescuers refused to give up on the little pup. Knowing they wouldn't be able to slide into any of the crevices, the rescuers called in for some backup. More help arrived and the rescue effort went well past sundown the next day. Rescuers moved aside the boulders that had trapped the puppy underneath, and finally they created enough space between the rocks to reach the stranded pup. When rescuers finally managed to free the puppy, she seemed startled but relieved to be in caring arms. To celebrate the puppy's freedom, rescuers gave her a fitting name, Rock. Everyone involved in the rescue had worked so hard to make this happen that many of them became emotional. Rock, in the meantime, was all smiles. Luckily, that didn't take long at all. She was adopted by the family of one of those involved in the rescue operation. Number 8 Ten years after her father was murdered, 33-year-old Jenny Stepping knew she wanted his heart to be at the wedding. So she asked retired college advisor Arthur Thomas, the man who received his heart, to give her away. She had met Mr. Thomas, 72, for the first time only the day before her wedding. After he walked her to the altar, Mr. Thomas put her hand on his heart, gave her a kiss, and then handed her over to her groom, Paul Manor. It was the closest she had come to her father since Michael Stepping was robbed and fatally shot on his way home from his job as a chef. His teenage attacker is now in prison. After he died, the Stepping family decided to donate all of his organs away, including the heart that Arthur Thomas had been waiting nearly 10 years to receive. At the time, Arthur was on his deathbed, so the heart truly saved his life. Mr. Thomas had been in regular contact over the years with the Steppings through letters and phone calls over the years, but it wasn't until they started planning Jenny Stepping's wedding that she saw the perfect chance for them to meet. Number 7 67-year-old Professor Sidney Engelberg, a 45-year lecturing veteran at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, 
was unfazed when the child of a mother at his lecture on organizational behavior began to cry. The embarrassed mom tried to leave the class, but instead, the father of four and grandfather of five scooped the kid up and soothed him in his arms without missing a beat in the lesson. Quieting a fussy baby during one of his lectures is so normal for Engelberg that the professor says he's not sure of the time frame in which the photo was taken. And the professor says he wasn't aware the photo was taken until one of his former students posted it online, where his daughter, Sarah Fishbane, discovered the photo and posted it to Facebook, calling her father the best in the world. Number 6. In this photo, a toddler can be seen lifting a tissue to the Japanese politician's eyes in an attempt to wipe away his tears. It's a sight that will more than likely melt your heart and bring a smile to your face. The notorious incident occurred on July 1, 2014, when former Hyogo Prefectural Assemblyman Ryu Toranonomura held a press conference to apologize for his suspected misuse of 3 million yen. However, during the address, the 47-year-old provincial politician started to break down in tears while trying to defend his actions and began wailing uncontrollably. According to media reports, he spent the money on 195 trips he made to four locations in one year, including 106 visits to the same hot spring resort, all without producing a receipt or a report. Number 5. Protests are usually pretty chaotic and definitely not the place to celebrate your birthday. But during a protest in Brazil, this riot officer had had enough of the violence and chaos and begged the protesters to please not make episodes on his birthday. One of the rioters heard about his plea and actually left and bought a cake and brought it back for him. It was enough to bring a tear to the old soldier's eyes and in an instant, Tension had dissolved and people were smiling, clapping and taking pictures. A dangerous moment had become a beautiful one instead. Number 4 The young patient in the bed was an 11-year-old boy who had an inoperable brain tumor. The medical staff bowed to him in gratitude and respect because he made a request that his organs be harvested and donated to save the lives of other children after his death. Liang Yaoyi from South China's Guangdong province had been fighting brain cancer since he was nine, and surgeries and treatments were not able to eliminate the tumor. As he neared the end, he revealed to his mother that he wanted her to donate his organs so that he could save the lives of other children. The medical staff with Liang at the end were very touched by his bravery and selflessness, and someone snapped a photo of them bowing three times to show their utmost respect for him. Number 3 This dramatic photo was taken after a 63-year-old woman crashed the wall of a car park at Weta Mata Harbor, Auckland. Police officers Paul Watts and Simon Russell and two members of the public rushed to the woman's aid as the car began to sink. The driver was seen clambering into the parcel shelf to get to an air pocket while the officers desperately tried to get to her. When finding the doors wouldn't open and that a trenchant blow to the window was ineffective, one of the officers used a large rock to break the rear window and rescue the driver. Number 2 In this very adorable photo, shows Nikolai the walrus being embarrassed after being presented with a fish cake for his birthday. The walrus could not believe his eyes when one of the zookeepers, Bert Van Santen, handed him the fish cake. Nikolai weighs 1,200 kilograms and lives in Dolphinarium, a marine mammal park in Harderwick, Netherlands. It is the largest marine mammal park in Europe. Number 1 In a world of increasing divorce rates, there are still couples who took their wedding vows very, very seriously. Here in this picture, 
is a man called James Burke. He's on his deathbed, and he's gazing lovingly into the eyes of Loretta, his wife of 64 years. His wife suffers from Alzheimer's disease, which James didn't. So before getting ill, he was his wife's carer and took charge of all their plans together. Facing death and knowing that his wife would outlive him and still require care after he was gone, he spent his final moments on the earth rewriting his will, ensuring that everything she would need for the rest of her life would be provided for her. His family described a man who fought to stay alive because his wife needed him, and unable to do that, took every measure to make sure that she could still feel his love even after he was gone.